back with the respiratory system. And so we're going to go over the parts of the respiratory system that we can see in the cow. Um, air comes in through the mouth, the oral cavity, and goes down the trachea. So this is your trachea. This gigantic thing is the larynx or voice box. And in here, this is the epiglottis. The epiglottis protects whenever you are swallowing food. It protects your trachea, so food does not go down here. And this cow was nice enough to leave you some of his cud in his esophagus right here. So he was swallowing. <laughs> um, but the epiglottis folds and covers that hole when he swallows, so that way food goes down the esophagus that would be right here, and the esophagus goes this length. That way food does not go down the trachea. Um, in the trachea, um, your trachea stays open because it has cartilage rings in it. Those C-shaped, they're literally C-shaped rings, and they're not closed in the back. They're open, so that way it has some flexibility, and you can like feel the ridges. And here's an edge of one of those C, the edge of a C-shaped ring coming around from the side. So it has some flexibility in it, so the trachea can bend and be under pressure, but it's not going to close. Now, why does the trachea have rings, but the esophagus does not? Um, remember, and look at all this, this is wet, sticky stuff. Everywhere in your body is lined by wet, mucus-covered membranes. And the only thing that should be going in and out of your trachea should be air. Air cannot get through wet, sticky, soggy membranes that are stuck together. So, evolutionarily, we've grown these um, C-shaped rings that hold an air tube open. Otherwise, it would be stuck together and no air would ever get through. Um, so we've got air comes in through the oral cavity, passes through the larynx, goes down the trachea. Um, it exits the trachea and goes into the big, gigantic lungs that fill that thoracic cavity. Um, underneath of here is the heart, which we've already gone over the heart, but it's located underneath of there. Looking closely, um, we found that there was a cut in this trachea, and so here is one of the branches, the bronchial branches, and it goes into here, and so I can put my finger in there, and that's a bron bronchial branch leading into this lobe of the lung. We're going to see if we can get that to inflate in a little bit. Um, lungs are not hollow balloons like we often think of them. They're actually very squishy material, um, super soft. I like to think of them like memory foam. If you've squished memory foam before, that's what these feel like, memory foam. Um, but lobes are sections of lungs, and one of our lungs has three lobes and one has two lobes. Here is a giant lobe of a lung. Here's another lobe and another lobe and another lobe on one side of the cow lung. And then on this side, this lung looks a little smaller, which is normal. We've got a big giant lobe and then two smaller lobes over here. So these are lobes of the lung. Um, each lobe is fed by its own bronchus. Um, if someone is to have a lung transplant, they can transplant a lobe a portion, or they can transplant an entire lung, um, depending on the needs of the patient. Um, again, this is fat material in here. Um, when we were going through the endocrine system, we were talking about glands and learning about the glands. And the glands next to and near the heart is your thymus gland, so we think we have located the thymus gland. I've cut it open so you can see glandular tissue looks different than fat tissue and other tissues. So we think we've maybe located portion of the thymus gland. Um, structures. You cannot see any alveoli in here. Um, they're way too small to see them, but you can see like little tiny sections in here. 
And each of those little tiny sections are fed by bronchioles. And inside of this little tiny section are thousands of alveoli inside of there. Um, and going back to membranes on here, this is the visceral pleura. You can see the visceral pleura that encompasses this. And if you were to puncture through here and cut that open, it's going to depressurize the lungs and they're not going to be able to function properly. So if someone is stabbed in the chest, it can cause your lungs to not be able to inflate. Come back and we're going to go over the respiratory system function a little bit. And just to review, here's a pig from first semester. Um, we can remove the heart and then you have the lungs underneath of the heart. And the major control mechanism for breathing is your diaphragm muscle. Remember the diaphragm muscle separates your thoracic cavity from your abdominal cavity. And this sheet right here is actually a muscle. And this muscle is what helps to control breathing. So we're gonna take a look at those parts on the cow now. So back to the cow, here's these gigantic lungs. Trachea is up here. And we've cut it off because we did a really awesome tracheostomy and cut a hole and put a tube into the trachea and it inflated a little portion of the lungs and there's a separate video for that. Um, but controlling breathing. Inhaling and exhaling is controlled via mostly your diaphragm. And the diaphragm is a big sheet-like muscle. So underneath you have this big white sheet. This is connective tissue. The white material is your connective tissue. And then on the edges of it, you can see these edges. This is the muscle portion of it. Since I got this from the butcher, they sell that meat, and that meat is called skirt steak. It's commonly used as fajita steak if you eat fajitas. Um, and that's what a lot of fajita steak is, is from the edges of this diaphragm. And so this diaphragm is a gigantic sheet in a cow. Think about how big a cow is. And it's a gigantic sheet that makes a wall between the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity. Now, for demonstrating lung function, tiny little model. And in this model, you've got your trachea. This is the walls of the thoracic cavity. There's one lung inside. And then down here on the bottom, the green balloon is the diaphragm. All that happens in the process of breathing is you change the volume inside of here, which changes the pressure, and it allows air to go in and out of the trachea. So I'm gonna pull and push on the diaphragm and that balloon inside is going to start changing shapes. Inhale, flexed, exhale, relax. Inhale, flexed, exhale, relaxed. And so that's the control of breathing. Now, if we do voluntary breathing and we inhale extra and exhale extra, then we also add in our um, external and internal intercostals that are between our ribs. But with relaxed breathing, it's just your diaphragm in and out. In this next portion of the video, you'll see Sydney inflating the lung via our tracheostomy that we put into the trachea. So a tracheostomy is a tube that enters into an opening that's made into the trachea and um, the air can go in and out that way. We cut off and we removed the rest of the trachea here and plugged it with plastic so air cannot get in and out from this portion. Why would somebody need a tracheostomy? Here is what a tracheostomy looks like in humans. It's a tube inserted into uh, the trachea via a slit between the C-shaped cartilage rings inside that trachea. 
A common need for a trachea is with throat or mouth cancer or some type of obstruction in the airways. If something is up here and prevents air from getting through the trachea, then having a tracheostomy put in is an option. In this next portion of the video, Sydney is going to breathe in, blow into this tube that has been inserted into the trachea, and this lobe of the lung is going to inflate partially. Thanks for joining us on this learning adventure. I hope you learned lots. Sydney and I learned together as we uh, explored the circulatory system and respiratory system of the cow. And she is an MCAT tutor and actually did some recordings of her own to take back to her students to share with them as they prepare to take the MCAT exam. So good, useful information today. Thanks.